Hey everyone, this is Colleen Coyne with Sparks Hockey. I am standing in for Russ this week on the edge. I am here with John Hutchin of High End Hockey. We're going to pick his brain about some other hockey-related topics. So, um, thank you, John, for doing the follow-up, for doing the event. Uh, oh, thanks you know, for it was a lot of fun. Yeah, so, fun. since we got you here, um, you know, you've been at this for a while. Coached a couple different levels: U18, uh, U16, most recently this year, I think. Um, you've worked with players at every level, uh, you know, youth up to NHL guys, so I think it's safe to say you got some street cred, <laughs> um, which is good. Uh, most recently you returned from, was it your second year with St. Yeah, Louis? second year. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, been around the block a little bit. Um, if there were like one or two big changes you've seen in the way players train today versus, say, even five years ago, what would you say they are? Uh, I think a lot now, a lot of guys now are, are focusing more on the agility and speed aspect uh I don't even five six years ago it was you know like the the age-old question how much can you bench yeah. uh <laughs> now especially with us like with our guys we don't really bench a ton and, and our guys come into the gym and, and they want to bench and coach I'm benching for testing and I'm like we don't need it you know what I mean it's just the way that the game has evolved and uh it's a lot more core strength a lot more agility and a lot more speed and and um uh, with that stuff coming along, it's it's just it made the game so much faster and, and quicker to watch and really more enjoyable too. Yeah. Any other big changes in the way that these guys are kind of focusing and changing? I think too, a lot of guys are, are now on the ice a lot more than they used to be, um, especially the young guys. So it's funny, like we see here with our guys, it, the younger guys will skate all day, every day. They don't care, you know, the, the 17 to 22 year olds, uh, they'll be on the ice for, starting their season may end in march and they're right back on the ice in, in may uh or april even but uh so th there's kind of different approaches to those guys the younger guys want to get on and, and improve as quick as they can and as much as they can in the summertime and then we have the nhl ahl guys that uh most of them really just started skating within the last couple of weeks you know it, it's guys like uh especially guys in the nhl with, with the penguins and stuff like that they they just started skating last week i know bobby started skating two weeks ago, yeah. uh, Bobby Farnham. So it's, uh, it's, it's stuff like that, that they start to really dial into their bodies. They're still training and working out, mm -hmm. uh, but they're getting on the ice a little bit later at the older levels just because they're playing so much. So, you know, for that type of stuff, though, it's, it's really what's best for you and what's best for your kids. Uh, if you're talking to a younger crowd, I would think I tell guys all the time with, with the kids, mites through bantams, let the kids be athletes. Yeah. You know, have them go out and play other sports and uh, become well-rounded in that sense. And, and then obviously when you get to a specialization period, <laughs> as they're older, uh, still have fun and, and, and be athletes. You know what I mean? Like right. I tell guys all the time, maybe it's a workout day, but it's an active recovery day or something like that. Uh, go out and play wiffle ball. Go out and play football, frisbee. Like go yeah. have fun and, and challenge yourself to do some stuff that you may not be used to. Uh, and that all ties into the core and the agility stuff too. So, yeah. Um, but I, yeah, definitely big changes since uh, five, six, seven years ago. I think training's come a long way. That was one of my, my future questions was about specialization and when yeah. you know when is the right time? When when is too soon? When is like you know the right time? And it's hard to say like when's too soon. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I see guys who are 13 years old are the best 13 year olds, and mm -hmm. they may be the best 18 year olds, but there's also kids at 13 who are the best who don't want to play hockey when they're 18 right. because they've specialized so young. So, I mean, I think it's a, it's a, it's a sport where, you know, you have to work at it year round, but you also need some time off, mm -hmm. uh, which is weird for me to say as a skills guy, uh, <laughs> you know, you want as many kids as you can in the summertime, but at the same time, you really want them to develop at their own pace. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you can't it, rush it. It almost feels like it's a, um, it's a matter of who's driving that bus. Yeah, it like, is. You know, it's like if it's the kid, the that's, if it's the parent that always wants them there, you know, that eighteen-year-old isn't yeah, playing it's, anymore. <laughs> it's not even fun to work with those kids, really. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and I think parents have to kind of take a step back and assess, like, okay, does my kid want this or do I want this? Right. You see too often that um, you know a lot of parents they'll come out and yeah, skate them hard and this and that, and like one of the most kind of refreshing things that I've had in the past couple of weeks is I have uh, an 07 that skates with me on Friday afternoons and his dad just told him like hey yeah you get to go work on Friday afternoons with a, a skills instructor and do private lessons but when you get there I want you to tell him what you want to work on that way he's not dropping him off and saying I want him to work on skating shooting pass whatever 
the kid can come on the ice and say, hey, coach, I want to do this today. Yeah. And it allows the kid to kind of have some fun and, and try some new things. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's good to see that because, you know, the kid wants to be there as opposed to mom and dad dropping them off and uh, making them be there. And when it comes to, like, different skills training and working on different uh, aspects of the game, um, we were talking recently about some of the changes we've seen in terms of things that are now almost core parts of training and skill development, like shooting off your front foot yeah, yeah. versus when I was playing and everyone was like, don't ever do that. That's like back. absolutely yeah. awful. Um, are there other skills that you've seen that have come into play that were maybe previously, you know, frowned upon or maybe just they're just a new skill that people are, are focusing uh, on? Yeah, I mean, we talk, just talking about shooting right there. Uh, I remember even when I was growing up, it was always like wooden sticks or aluminum sticks it was pull the puck back from as far as you can before you shoot it and release right. it through your body and now it's more punch down on the on your bottom hand and with the flex and, and the sticks now yeah. uh, they're doing all the work and then you're also starting to see a lot more uh, skill work of when you're receiving a puck or down low and tight of buying yourself time and space you know and, and there's a lot of little things you can do there and as how you receive a puck or, or what type of move you make or how you manipulate your hips and stuff like that. Uh, that has come a long way as opposed to the old days of just kind of get it and go to the net and, and that was it. So I think the game's evolved a ton. Uh, and with that, obviously the skills evolved because you start to pick up ways of, uh, of how to manipulate defenders or if you're a defenseman, how to manipulate the forward. And you're starting to see a lot of focus on stuff like that now. Very good. And just a couple more, if you don't mind. Yeah, no we good? All right. So, um, so we talked briefly, you were talking about parents and how they drop them off and they tell you what to do. If there was like one thing that you wish parents would stop doing and one thing you wish they would start doing for their kids, like to help them develop, what, what would those be? Can I say wheelie bag? <laughs> oh um, my God. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, for parents, it's just uh, let the kids have fun. Let them be their own individual. If they want to do it, let them do it. Um, if they, if it's a hassle to get them in the car to come to the rink or to, or to go to a, uh, anywhere with hockey or, or any sport, really, maybe reassess that and, and don't force kids because, you know what, like kids have a mind of their own. Um, and if they're not having fun, they're probably not going to, it's not going to be worth your money, whether it's a private lesson or uh, skills and skills clinic or games, practice, stuff like that. It, Parents will end up going home frustrated because the kids didn't try or, or whatever. Um, but the, the next step to that is always encourage them to. You know, I, I hear horror stories of kids now of, of, you know, oh, yeah, when I was 15, my dad was making me walk home with my bag because I didn't play well, stuff like that. I'm not saying always be positive. Like, obviously, you got to point out negatives to help them grow. But, um, you know, one of the things that I've always tried to do with kids of all ages is, hey, you know, you, you didn't do this, this, and this, but you did that, that, you know. Right. So uh, if you're going to point out a negative, try to point out a positive, and at least the kids don't have that mindset of every time they go home from practice or a game of, gee, I wonder what I did wrong today. They'll get a little best of both worlds, and, and um, you know, that sometimes makes it enjoyable for them right. to hear, like, oh, I did this, this, and this well, but i got to improve on this. Yeah. When I coach the uh, Little Mite team, I always encourage the parents because the goals are the obvious good, right? Yeah. There, you walk away, you scored a goal, you know yeah. that's good. And I, I always encourage the parents to say, you know, yes, if they score a goal, like point that out and congratulate mm -hmm. them. But please point out every other good thing they yeah, did because exactly. they probably it's, did about 10 other good it, things yeah, out there besides Something just led that. to the goal. or you, Yeah, you know, you know, or great back checking. Exactly. Even at the Mite level, you see kids diving. It's great. <laughs> so, um, all right. If, uh, if, there was, if a parent had $50 to spend on an extra how would they say, how would you suggest they spend that like if, if there's a training tool or if there's like how would you spend uh, 50 bucks on your kid i would probably get them a, a stick handling ball yeah. and those are pretty cheap now you can even do it with golf balls but um, stick handling is something that they can do at home and not a lot of space and they won't rip up floors mm -hmm. and carpets and they won't be putting holes in your walls and stuff like right. that so uh, i would say a stick handling ball because not a lot of kids not enough kids stick handle you know they get to the rink or, or they go in the backyard and every kid wants to shoot 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 well yeah. learn how to stick handle as well it'll help you with your passes it'll help you with that shot it, it'll help you with everything so it's good advice i, like I would think that that would probably be the, the the best way to do it right now gotcha i got two last questions about rules okay so as you know usa hockey this year 
um, changed one major rule for kids that are 14 and under. Now, obviously, you're in 16 and under. This isn't really going to affect your coaching. What are your thoughts on the idea of not being able to ice the puck when you're a man down? I actually don't like it. Um, you know, it, you're already penalized uh, with a man down, and now you're taking that away from them, the ability to clear the puck and to reset, to change up. And, you know, it's going to – it creates a lot – I think it will create a lot of bad habits of kids overhandling pucks now because instead of just being able to whack it out of the zone and, and get a line change and stuff like that, yes, it will create some – hockey sense in the fact that they now have to control the puck but at the same time like I said you're already penalized and with that man down it's kind of always been that that play of hey we're down a man we've been hemmed in our zone for 45 seconds get the puck let's ice it um, you know it may create more in zone face offs because goalies may be more apt to cover the puck <clears throat> I doubt it'll create any more offense for the penalized team uh, you might see power plays percentages rise if people even worry about power play percentages at U14 uh, and under, but, you know, I, I just don't think it's something that uh, that needed to be done. Yeah. Uh, and and I, there's plenty of people out there on both sides of the fence of that, but uh, I just didn't like it. I, I didn't mind a couple of years ago when they had the uh, the automatic offsides. I didn't mind that because it forced kids to come back and, and make a play and regroup, but at least it was five on five. Uh, like I said, with this, with this new icing, it, it's just... Uh, or how you can't ice the puck anymore, it's, it takes a lot out of it, and, and I don't think it'll be that drastic that it's going to help anybody. Fair enough. And the last one is not quite a rule change yet, but we've heard whispers up there in Canada that they're thinking about moving, checking up another level. So right now it's introduced at U14. They're thinking about introducing it at U16. Uh, another one that uh, I don't agree with, especially mm -hmm. up in Canada, because you, you see some... 16 and 17 year olds break into major junior hockey at that level and for a kid who's 16 17 years old to you know move up into the major junior level of playing 18 19 and 20 year olds nhl draft picks uh maybe kids with nhl experience who have played five six games before getting sent back to junior um i think you're doing them a disservice by now they get to that level now they have to learn how to take a hit give a hit uh all the while playing pretty much grown men at that point. Yeah. Uh, and at 16 years old, you're still, a, most of the time, you're still a boy, yeah. uh, 17, two. And, you know, now all of a sudden you play a guy who's 19, 20 years old, who's been a first round pick in the NHL. You might head in there with some hesitation. Gotcha. Um, but it all comes down to what's been done leading up to that point. Uh, obviously, coaches can still prepare kids for that without letting them hit. Um, but I think, uh, you know, let them hit. I mean, I grew up playing around here when it was uh, the Metro Boston Hockey League and you can hit for mites. And you never saw, like, no mite ever got killed with right. a concussion back then And uh, because you learned how to hit at an early age and you learned how to protect yourself and protect others. And it wasn't, uh, there weren't as many headshots and there weren't so many kids like, shying away from hits. It wasn't, it, it wasn't a free for all, for all on the ice. Um, so the more you push it back, I think you start to create some kids with a little bit of uh, confidence issues. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, John Hutchin of the Neponsa Valley River Rats and High End Hockey for joining us. Your season starts... August 26th. All right, Neponsa Valley River Rats, U16. Keep an eye out for John. And if you have ideas for The Edge, definitely submit them to At Sparks Hockey. We're At Sparks Hockey everywhere. Uh, tune in this week and every week. Thanks so much.